In this module, we'll be looking at the contingency procedures in the event of accidental spills. Spill procedures can be separated into two, those inside a safety cabinet and those outside a cabinet. A spill outside a safety cabinet is of greater concern as it could involve the accidental release of an infectious agent, putting laboratory personnel and samples within the vicinity at risk. In the event of a spill involving a Category A or B virus outside of a cabinet, all members of staff working in that area must be evacuated to an area with an increased level of air pressure to assess the situation and confirm what action is required. Any accidental release of an infectious agent needs to be reported to the local biosafety officer and in some cases the health and safety executive. For example, if the two laboratory areas function independently and both run at minus 80 pascals, the lobby runs at minus 70 pascals, the corridor runs at minus 60 pascals and the changing room functions at minus 50 pascals. If the incident occurs in the lab, staff should retreat to the lobby to assess the situation and, if necessary, exit. If the incident occurs in the lobby, they should enter the corridor to assess the situation. And if in the corridor, they should enter the shower rooms. Each time, they are retreating back to an area with an increase in air pressure to protect themselves from the spill. The procedures and reactions to any spill will depend on the risk level of the agent or the virus that is spilt. Under certain circumstances, some Category C viruses can be worked with on a bench. If a spillage occurs here, it should be covered with absorbent paper flooded with 1% Verkan S and left for 10 minutes. Any contaminated PPE should be discarded and replaced with clean PPE. After 10 minutes the spillage should be mopped up with absorbent paper. Any materials used to clear the spill should be sealed in a bag and discarded with the lab waste for autoclaving. As with any spillage, consideration should be given to the implications of the spill on sample integrity. If a spill with any virus occurs within a safety cabinet, much the same procedures for a Category C virus spillage apply. The main difference is that waste material should be discarded in the tin or bag within the cabinet. Because the spillage is contained within the cabinet, there is less risk of aerosol release to the environment, although outer gloves and oversleeves could pose a contamination risk to the sample and should be changed. Risk to other samples within the cabinet should also be considered. A small spill outside a safety cabinet of a Category B virus might include a swab, a feather or a small piece of tissue. Given the risk factors, the following procedures should apply. Alert all staff working within the area to move to another lab or lobby immediately. Prior to leaving the room where the spill has occurred, Lab staff should remove any PPE. Relocate to a new area in the facility that's against the gradient of air pressure and assess what actions need to be taken. These will be listed in the risk assessment. If you are in any doubt, exit the facility and consult the building officer. In the example of a very small spill of a category B or C virus, put fresh gloves and an apron on, 
safety glasses or goggles and a P3 mask. Then return to the spill area, cover the spill with tissue paper and flood with 1% Verkines solution. After 10 minutes, the tissue and the spill should be discarded into a bag, which is then sealed and placed in the lab waste. With any spill involving Category A viruses or a large spill involving a Category B or C virus outside a safety cabinet, all personnel within the laboratory must be notified. All staff must vacate the facility immediately according to the contingency procedures detailed in the risk assessment. Everyone should shower out before leaving. The incident must be reported to the building officer, line manager and local biosafety officer on exiting the shower or changing room facility. A warning sign must be placed on the shower doors showing the details and time of the incident to prevent anyone else entering the building. Before a thorough clean-up can begin, a local assessment of the exposure risk needs to be made. Once that's completed and approved, certain procedures need to be put in place. At least two hours must elapse before re-entering the facility to treat and clean the spill. This two-hour interval ensures that the air handling system should have removed any hazardous aerosols. The building should only be entered to prepare for fumigation. This must be performed by a designated member of staff wearing full PPE relevant for the category of virus and the task in hand. Then shower out and the affected area fumigated. After fumigation, the spill can be cleared up and along with the discarded waste, put through the lab autoclave waste cycle. It's always better to be safe than sorry. So if there is ever any doubt about safety in the workplace, it's always worth seeking the advice of those in the know prior to action. What should you do if you drop something and you don't know what it is? If you spill something and you're not sure what it is, then you need to act according to the protocol and assume it's the highest category of virus. What should you do in a power cut? OK, in a power cut, all of our buildings are on backup generators, so if the power goes off, the generators will kick in. There's about a five-second lag between the power going off and the generators kicking in. If you're working in a cabinet, then the airflow will decrease, but the protocol is to very gently remove yourself from the working area, removing your PPE. Um, the power will kick in again and the, the cabinet will start working. Um, the recommendation is, is that only critical work is carried out when you're on backup generators and in those circumstances that you wear an increased level of PPE. What should you do if the alarms are sounding when you enter the unit or if they start sounding while you're working? The alarms indicate that there's something wrong with the air handling or something wrong with the mechanical handling of the building. If you go to enter the building and the alarms are sounding, do not enter report to the building officer and the, the, the reason for the alarms will be investigated. If you're working in there and the alarms go off, the same information is there that if it means that the air handling has gone wrong um, and you will need to remove yourself from the contained facility. So there you have it. If in doubt, get out. Mm -hmm.